everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. Today's live uh, video, we're going to look at a brand new ETF that has just launched. You've probably read about it. It's the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, ticker B-I-T-O. It literally just started trading uh, moments ago. And so I'm going to walk through in this video seven things that I hope, I hope you think about and consider. Some pros, some cons before you make an investment in this new ETF. So the first thing, let me just show you, it started trading uh, today. And as I get ready to show you that, I realized that I need to make a change to my setup to do that. So I'm gonna quickly do that. And see if that fixes it. If not, you know, here we go. Sorry about that. So this is uh, Yahoo Finance. You can see it just started trading. It's I'm recording this. It's 9.45 Eastern time. So it just started trading 15 minutes ago. And uh, it's currently up 3%. So that's what it's done. Uh, obviously, there's no data on this fund, uh, of course, since today is its first day of trading. Uh, other than you can see, you know, its, it's volume already is significant, as one would expect, given the publicity around uh, this fund and um, and it started trading up three percent. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing I want to point out, as you can see, and it's sort of obvious, this is an ETF. This is an ex exchange traded fund, and uh, that's significant for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, it makes it very easy to get exposure in this case to Bitcoin. We'll we'll talk about how that works in a minute, but. To get exposure to Bitcoin, if that's what you want, you know, you don't have to get an account at Coinbase or Gemini or one of these other crypto exchanges. You don't have to worry about vaults and cold storage and private keys and, you know, the risk that someone's going to hack your Coinbase account, which apparently has happened uh, to a number of folks. Uh, you can buy this on your typical brokerage platform. It's not, I, I know that it's not available everywhere yet. For example, it's not available on M1 Finance. But you'll certainly find it, you know, at uh, the more traditional brokerages, uh, and it will eventually, I'm sure, be on M1 Finance and, and some of the other newer platforms as as well. And the other thing related to that uh, is that um, uh, you can invest in this fund through an IRA, a Roth IRA. Uh, you before would have to open up a self-directed IRA to get exposure to, say, Bitcoin or other uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, but with this ETF, if it's what you want to do, uh, you could, it makes it easier to invest uh, in a retirement account. And so that's a, a pretty significant change in the, the crypto uh, a landscape. So that's the second thing. The third thing, again, I've got a list of seven for you, is that uh, this fund doesn't own Bitcoin directly. There are some ETFs like a gold ETF that will literally physically take possession of, of gold bars, for example, uh, as its underlying asset. But with this ETF, that's, it's not actually uh, acquiring Bitcoin. It's actually trading uh, futures contracts, Bitcoin uh, futures contracts. And, and in the current regulatory landscape, not that we need to get into the, the weeds too much, but that was basically the only way they could get SEC approval for this fund. The SEC has yet to approve an ETF that actually uh, invest in the spot price, uh, you know, of Bitcoin and, and own Bitcoin. So uh, they had to use Bitcoin futures contracts, and that's significant for a, a couple of reasons. The first one is uh, because it doesn't directly track the spot price of Bitcoin. The value of this fund could go could go up or down in ways that are different than Bitcoin. Now it'll be interesting to see once we have more data and we and, and this this ETF is traded for some period of time just what those differences are but they're basically investing in shorter term uh, futures contracts that they're going to roll over from month to month and I'll show you where I get that information so you can check it out uh, on your own and below this video is a link uh, to uh, this information but uh, here is the website for ProShares uh, uh, Bitcoin Strategy uh, ETF and uh, within this page, you'll see a link to uh, the prospectus, which I highly recommend you read. It's not that long, actually. It's only about eight pages. Some of it's kind of dense, uh, but all in all, I think not so bad. And they walk through here. You can see it right here, this section right here on page three. 
that you know th this is the, this is Bitcoin futures contracts. That's what we're investing in cash settled Bitcoin futures, meaning uh, the, the contract gets settled with cash, not the actual exchanging of Bitcoin. Um, and they talk about in here how they're going to roll it over from month to month. And that in some instances, you can see it right down here, this paragraph. In some instances, that may that may force them to uh, uh, sell low and buy high. Not something you normally want to do, but they may be forced to do that in some circumstances. Um, and, and of course, the other could be could be true as well. They could sell high and buy low. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, this does not directly track the spot price of Bitcoin. Exactly what those differences will be, we'll see over time. Uh, the fourth thing, and it's still related to the fact that this is an ETF, and this I think is a, a positive uh, thing. It is regulated, right? It's regulated by the Commodity Futures, uh, the CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, I think. I've got that right. Um, and it's traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So uh, this is a regulated uh, investment. Now, that doesn't mean you won't lose money, okay? Uh, but it does uh, mean that the fund has to follow certain rules uh, that say when you just go out on your own and buy Bitcoin, uh, it's not effectively regulated by anything. And so uh, some will take comfort in the fact that this ETF is uh, regulated, and, and that's true, and that's the fourth point. Now, uh, so I've got seven things I want to share with you. I'm moving through it quickly. Number five is the fund is very expensive. Uh, it, it charges an expense ratio of 95 basis points, uh, which is uh, quite expensive. And that's not the end of it. So that 95 basis point expense ratio does not include transaction costs. And the transaction costs in this uh, ETF could be significant. Remember, they're buying and selling futures contracts regularly, rolling them over from month to month. And so the transaction costs could be very, very significant. We won't actually know what those are until the fund is operated for some period of time. And in fact, if we go back to the prospectus, um, if you read this, and I hope you do, pay special attention to the portfolio turnover section. It's just one paragraph, but they talk about the turnover. And then in the paragraph we just looked at on page four, they talk about how they're rolling, you see right here, they're rolling futures contracts. Uh, and so all of these things can and likely will uh, result in pretty significant transaction costs. Again, the impact they will have on returns, we just don't know yet because we don't know how significant those transaction um, costs uh, uh, will be. But, it, you know, buyer beware, you want to be aware of that potential. The sixth thing uh, that I want to mention is the potential ta tax risks of this portfolio. I'm going to go back to the prospectus. And um, in a prospectus, this is true of any investment, they talk about risks. You can see that they begin here on page four of the prospectus, and they've got all kinds of risks. I mean, basically, this is the part of the prospectus that's designed to scare you. And, um, and we should be. We should make these investments with our eyes wide open. And so I'm not going to go through all of these risks. I'll let you go through them. Some of them are going to be obvious, I think, to most investors. Like, for example, I think most folks know there's a risk of investing in Bitcoin. Uh, but still, the one risk I want to point out, it's all the way down here on page seven, I believe. Yeah, here it is. Page seven, tax risk. So in order to um, get special tax treatment, be, be accorded the tax treatment that's given to what's called a regulated investment company, uh, they have to jump through a number of hoops and they walk through them in this paragraph. I won't go through the whole paragraph. You can look at it uh, on your own. Uh, but the things that they have to do could influence the investments that they make inside the fund. And they point that out in this paragraph. I don't think it's a paragraph to gloss over lightly. The unfortunate reality is we don't know how these tax risks will influence the fund. We won't know until, you know, it's got uh, some months or, or longer uh, of, of actual operations. But it was a significant enough risk that they put it in their prospectus. And I wanted to point it out to you. I think it's something that you should consider before making uh, a, an investment. Again, unfortunately, I can't tell you, well, here's the specific risk and here's how it's going to play out. All I can tell you is it's there and you should be aware of it. Now, of course, if you invest in this fund 
in an IRA or Roth IRA, then you're uh, largely shielded from the, the direct tax risks. Although if, the, if uh, to avoid those risks, the fund has to invest in certain ways that obviously could affect the performance of the fund, could in fact affect the transaction costs of the fund. Again, how that all plays out, we'll only know over time. Now, the seventh and final thing that I think should be obvious to everyone is that this fund is likely to be extremely volatile just because the underlying asset, these are uh, futures contracts, but they're Bitcoin futures contracts. And we all know just how volatile Bitcoin uh, can be. Now, that can be a volatility in and of itself, I don't think is a bad thing. You could use this ETF to get some exposure to, to crypto, in this case, obviously, Bitcoin, you're getting it, I'll call it indirectly, you're not getting direct exposure to the spot price of Bitcoin through Bitcoin futures contracts. Um, but you could use it as a diversifier. You can say, look, uh, Rob, I understand this is going to be highly volatile. Let's see, by the way, what the price has done in the first few minutes. Well, it's still up. It's still up about 3%. So, so far, I guess volatility, it went up and it sort of stayed at that level. But of course, it's only been trading now for 26 minutes. Um, but volatility could work in your favor. I mean, that's really the point in, in, to some degree of, of diversification, right? You, you get asset classes that in and of themselves can be highly, highly volatile. Uh, but of course, you only allocate a portion of your portfolio uh, to that asset class. And, in, and then it's part of an overall recipe, right, uh, of, of U.S. stocks, international stocks, some bonds, and, 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 and so on. And so it could actually, in theory... Uh, be a, a good uh, a way to get some diversity to a portfolio if you were to allocate, I'll just say roughly two to five percent of your portfolio. Am I recommending that? Absolutely not. But uh, I'm trying to show you sort of the pros and cons of of this fund. And if it's if it's the kind of investment you believe in, uh, the volatility could, in theory, actually uh, not be a bad thing. Again, as part uh, if it's a small portion of an overall diversified portfolio. That's kind of how I think of small cap stocks and say emerging emerging market uh, funds, although uh, as volatile as those can be, <laughs> nothing, I don't think anything right now compares to the volatility uh, of Bitcoin. So there you go. That's the new fund that's launched. I know that it's been big news. So I wanted to share with you some information about it. Um, seven things to keep in mind. I think some are are positive. You know, it's an ETF. It's It's, it's regulated. Uh, and, um, you know, that, that's good. But there's some bad things. It's very expensive. Transaction costs will likely be significant. We just don't know. There's potential tax risks and it, it will be highly volatile. Again, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Although I will tell you, I can, I can tolerate volatility with an asset that I believe over the long term will increase in value, like small companies or emerging markets. I'm not at all convinced over the long term, Bitcoin will actually increase in value. And I know I'm probably in the minority there. I don't know. Uh, and uh, certainly a lot of people have made a small fortune uh, on cryptocurrencies. And I get that. I'm still not convinced that long term, it's a sound investment. So for me, I will not be adding this ETF uh, to my portfolio, but wanted to provide you my thoughts on it. So you can you know, do your own evaluation and make your own decisions. As I mentioned, I'll have a link to the ProShares website below the video. And from there, you'll be able to look at not only the prospectus that I showed you just a minute ago, but also, which is right here, but they also have a link to their fact sheet as well. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them uh, below the video. I'll be happy to, happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy, I don't know if it's Bitcoin or not, but it's definitely, without question, financial freedom.